Okay, so let's um, resume where we stopped from where we stopped, and it was here. Okay, so we had written down the probability for producing the final state, um, which has um, the particles carrying momentum p 1, p 2, so and so forth up to p n. So, I am assuming I am uh, looking at a final state which has n particles in it and they have momenta p 1, p 2 and so forth. Okay? That is what you see here in this out state and this was the expression for probability. And last time we had also looked at these last two factors. Uh, which are here in this box okay, and we wrote down uh, its expression in, in terms of these matrix elements which are called uh, which are denoted by m here and uh, that those matrix elements we get by stripping off the factors that always accompany them and also these delta functions. Okay. Now, as I have repeatedly said that if you have delta functions in your integrals, then it is much easier to integrate things, right? because delta functions make very uh, uh, things very simple. So, let us first see how many delta functions we have, what, what kind of constraints they are giving and then we will proceed. Okay? So, that is the plan. So, so, you have four delta functions here, delta 4 which says that uh, k 1 prime plus k 2 prime should sum up to p i, uh, should, uh, should add up to sum over all the p i's. Okay, and another delta function saying k 1 prime, k 1 double prime plus k 2 double prime should also uh, equal to sum of all the external momenta. So, these are 8 delta functions. Now, if you go here and look at this factor. you can integrate trivially over d to b perp. Okay. This integral over this exponential function gives you a delta function. So, it gives you 2 pi square delta 2 k 1 perp prime or k 1 prime perp minus k 1 double prime perp. Okay, perp is for short form for perpendicular. So, this will give you this delta function. Okay. So, I will have then in addition to these 8 delta function uh, functions 2 more delta functions. So, I will now um, write down all of these all of these delta functions. So, delta 4 k 1 prime k 2 prime okay, summation over p i then um, delta 4 k 1 double prime plus k 2 double prime minus summation over p i. and times delta 2 k 1 prime and k 2 prime the perpendicular components of them. Let us check correct. Okay, so, this is what we will work with first. Okay. Now, this 
I can write as again this delta function and in this delta function the second one I will replace this summation over p i by k 1 prime plus k 2 prime right because this delta function these four delta functions click when summation over p i equals k 1 prime plus k 2 prime. Okay. So, uh, otherwise this entire expression is 0 and because it clicks only for that value I can replace summation over p i by k 1 prime plus k 2 prime. So, I will write this one as k 1 double prime plus k 2 double prime minus k 1 prime minus k 2 prime. Okay. I have just put from here times delta 2 k 1 perpendicular k 1 prime perpendicular minus k 1 double prime perpendicular perp. Okay. Good. So, that is what we have. Now, I will just take it to the next page. I hope I still remember how I did that. So, this is what we are looking at. Okay. Now, let us look at this carefully. Um, let us look at these 6 delta functions first. Okay. We will come to this these 4 delta functions at the end. So, we will look at these first uh, at these ones. So, this is what this is saying that um, the x component of k 1 prime should equal to the x component of k 1 double prime and the y component of k 1 prime should be equal to y component of k 1 double prime. Okay. So, let me write down this thing. So, these are 6 delta functions. So, first I am writing what you get from these delta 2. So, I am just expanding delta 2 instead of using vector notation I will write in components. So, this is delta k 1 prime x component should be equal to k 1 double prime x component. Okay. See this is a vector equation k 1 prime perpendicular minus k 1 double prime perpendicular equal to 0 that is when the delta function hits that is a vector equation. Let me write it down. Okay. These are basically two equations one for x component and one for y component that is what I am doing here. So, times delta k 1 prime y minus k 1 double prime y. So, delta 2 is written in this way. Now, let me write down the delta 4. Um, I will just re write down from my notebook, so that I do not use have do not have to use my, my brain and tear it out. So, delta um, k 1 double prime x plus k 2 double prime x minus k 1 prime x minus k 2 prime x. Okay. That is the x component of this argument. So, that is what is here. Then I will do the same for y. Okay. Uh, 
okay this is also good k1 z plus k2 z double prime minus k1 z prime minus k2 z prime okay then one more for the energy components so delta of omega k1 double prime plus omega k2 double prime k1 prime sorry this primes are at the wrong place k1 prime plus omega k2 double prime minus omega k1 prime minus omega k2 prime okay so i've just written them down in components that's all i have done so if you see here let's look at k1 k1 and k1 prime and k1 double prime so this this uh, let's look at k1 prime vector and k2 uh, sorry k1 double prime vector okay these two so this delta function says that the x components of these two vectors match so x components of these two they are equal this delta function says that the x y components of these two also are equal how about the z components well none of these says that the z components are equal okay at least not directly now let's look at k2 prime and k2 double prime okay how about them so if you look here in this this delta function you have k1 prime x minus uh, sorry there is a issue of sign no fine k1 double prime x is here k1 minus k1 prime x is here okay now this delta function because of this delta function this entire expression will be non zero only when k1 double prime x is equal to k1 prime x okay otherwise this entire expression is zero so i can put k1 double prime x is equal to k1 prime x in this entire expression so if i do so then k1 double prime x minus k1 prime x equal to 0 i can put here because of this delta function and these two go away okay and i am left with only k2 double prime x minus k2 prime x okay so x components of k2 double prime and k2 prime they are equal from this delta function once i use this first delta function okay so x components match how about the y components the same thing here k1 double prime y minus k prime y that is equal to 0 using this delta function okay and then you are left with k2 double prime y is equal to k2 prime y so y components of k2 prime and k2 double prime they also match and again i cannot say directly anything about the z components i will have to think about it okay so you cannot say about this that's one uh, fixing that will require one condition fixing something about z will require another condition two conditions and right now we are also left with two delta functions this and that okay so what i'm going to argue next is that in fact Uh, argue is that the z components also match okay so that's what the goal is but before i do that let me now write this product of delta functions uh, using the information that i have already used in writing making these tables so i have delta k1 prime x okay then you have delta of 
k2 double prime x minus k2 prime x from this line times this line will give you delta of k2 double prime y minus k2 prime ok I am not being very consistent k2 prime x sorry minus k2 double prime y k2 prime y minus k2 double prime ok sorry I keep making mistakes that is why I should look at my notes k2 prime x minus k2 double prime x k2 prime y minus k2 double prime y now this is better this is correct ok so this is fine and then this remaining two and we are going to next manipulate these two delta functions ok um, let us see if I can do that thing again ok ok works ok so these so these are the things with which we have to work now now if you look at the this delta function now this delta function will click if k 1 double prime z is equal to k 1 prime z and that will be nice because then it will mean that the z components also match and also when k 2 double prime z equal to k 2 prime z. So, all of these will the argument of the delta function would be 0 and delta function would click. Okay. But then there is another possibility that k 1 double prime z is equal to k 2 prime z and k 2 double prime z is equal to k 1 prime z that even then it will click. Okay. So, what I will do instead is first I will look at this delta function and then we will come to the, the second last delta function. Okay, so, that is the idea. In let us call this equation A there is no equation these are yeah these there is equality so fine in a okay so what does it say so we have let me first write down i will i am writing down omega k1 double prime okay so let's write down omega k1 omega k 1 double prime and what is that it is k 1 double prime square plus m p 1 square. Ok, I will uh, physical mass for m p and ok and 1 is a subscript not for momentum, but how about this how about we allow we drop the p for physical mass and I will just write m 1. Okay. So, I am allowing for different masses for projectile and the target particles okay, and what is this? It is just k 1 double prime x square plus k 1 double prime y square k 1 double prime z square plus m 1 square. 
Okay. Now, I have already argued that k 1 double prime x is same as k 1 prime x. So, I will write k 1 prime x square plus k 2 prime y square plus k 1 double prime z square plus m 1 square. Okay. And this I have done using the previous delta functions, okay. because I have, I have these delta functions which allow me to do this. Now, omega k 1 double prime minus omega k 1 prime is equal to 0. See that is omega k 1 double prime minus omega k 1 prime. Okay, these two together could give you 0 and omega k 2 double prime minus omega k 2 prime could also give you 0. Okay. But and in that if they do then this delta function clicks, okay, it gives you a non 0 value, but for that, but for that um, just a second. Uh, for that k 1 double prime z should be equal to k 1 prime z, then only this will be satisfied not otherwise. Okay. And also you see now that other way around that omega k 1 double prime equal to omega k 2 prime. So, you might think that these two together give you 0 and these two together give you 0, that is also another possibility in principle, but that is not going to work because we are allowing for uh, different masses, so it will not work in general. Okay, so we, we are keeping the masses different for k1 prime and uh, for k1 prime and k2 prime, and k1 double prime and k2 double prime. So in general, that's not going to work. So we get this condition satisfied if k 1 double prime z is equal to k 1 prime z. And similarly, omega k 2 double prime minus omega k 2 prime is equal to 0, if k 2 double prime z is equal to k 2 prime z. Okay. And which is nice, now I can from this one Um, hmm. From this one, I conclude that the z components also match. Okay. Now, the z components match. Yeah, that's good. So the z components match, and then I can use that information in this delta function. Okay, and turn it to something is not very. Okay, I will think about it later if there is something sloppy in the argument, but I will just proceed now. Um, so, what in essence you get is looking at these two last delta functions, okay, what you get is delta k 1, um, no, everything is fine I guess.
Okay. So, with what I have argued above from that we get that the product of these two delta functions in the previous uh, page should be proportional to should be proportional to delta of k 1 z double prime minus k 1 z prime times delta of k 2 z double prime minus k 2 z prime. Okay, that is what we expect and then we can say that these two match. Okay. So, good um, because now I can replace um, all these delta functions by a delta function which is con uh, saying that k 1 prime is k 2 prime and k 1 double prime is k 2 double prime. But now we should find out the Jacobian here. Okay, when you go from here to to the right hand side, you'll pick up some factors, and that is the factor which we need to figure out. Okay, so uh, which one are the last delta function? What is that? Okay, we'll now look at this one. This delta function. So, the argument of the last delta function we will call it I will see it as a function of call it uh, f k 1 double prime z. Okay. So, um, let me write down I am saying f of k 1 double prime z is by definition omega k 1 double prime plus omega k 2 double prime minus omega k 1 prime minus omega k 2 prime. Okay. That is what appeared in this argument that is what I have defined as f. Okay. Now, because we are going to manipulate these delta functions, I will in this delta function I will take a derivative of f with respect to k 1 double prime to find out where uh, I mean to find out the, the Jacobian. Now, this is omega k 1 double prime plus um, this k 2 prime k 2 double prime omega k 2 double prime I can write as um, the x component k 2 prime double prime x square, but the double prime k the x component of k 2 double prime is same as x component of k 2 prime. So, this is fine plus again the y component of double prime is same as y component of k 2 prime. So, this is ok I can write it this way, but k 2 z um, double prime square because this is yet to be determined okay. plus m p 1 square and then minus omega k 1 prime minus omega k 2 prime. Okay. So, let us take the derivative and what will you get? You will get because this involves the square roots. Okay. This is this just like this one you write a expression with square root and then differentiate then you will get okay, that is what you get from here. Then the second term gives you 1 over 2 times this exact thing, but that thing is 2 k 2 double prime times the derivative of what you have in the square roots that gives you hmm. and for that derivative I should um, substitute k 2 double prime z to be the following this is from the previous delta function. Okay. 
Okay. This is this expression is coming from from here. Okay, so I am just substituting k two. So okay, a prime has been left. Okay, so I am just substituting k one double prime k two double prime z in terms of uh, k one double prime z and these things. Okay, that's the expression here. And what do you get? You get taking the derivative, you get two times k one prime z plus k two prime z minus k one double prime z, and then because there's a minus sign here, you get a factor of minus one. Okay, and what is this? It is one over two. Okay, let me if you. Look at um, this piece. This is equal to one over omega k two double prime, and then k one prime z. Yeah, you can use the previous delta functions, and this. Will give you k two double prime z. Okay, and there is a minus sign here, and this one gives k one double prime z over omega k one double prime. Okay, so you know that this is the modulus of this one over modulus of this thing goes into the uh, is the Jacobian. Okay. So what do we get? We get um, delta of k one double prime z plus k two double prime z minus k one prime z. Sorry, minus k two prime z. Times delta of omega k one double prime plus omega k two double prime minus omega k one prime k k two prime. Okay, this product which was here, these two is equal to. Um, one over modulus of this thing, this expression. Okay, times. Delta of uh, k one z minus k one double prime z minus k one prime z times delta of k two double prime z minus k two prime z. Okay, that's what you are going to get, and um, this one I have written using previous delta functions. Okay. So that's the Jacobian I have obtained, and now I have um, earlier I had the equality of the x components of k1 and k1 k1 prime and k1 double prime and k2 prime and k2 double prime, but now also I have equality for the z components of k1 prime and k2 double prime. Okay, so all the six components are matching now. Okay, so what did we get finally? We get this delta four times this delta two, which came from the B perp integral k one prime perp. 
minus k 1 double prime perp, we have shown that this is equal to double prime k 2 double prime z over omega k 2 double prime okay, that modulus times delta cube which enforces the equality of all the three components of k 1 and k 2 k 1 prime and k 2 k 1 double prime and k 2 double prime and k 2 prime. Okay, this is very useful because now I can put this in the expression for the p the the momentum sorry the sorry the pro the probability okay so here i have now lots of delta functions and they are all nice and simple now and i can just do this integral okay so let's first count all the delta function that we have we have 6 here and 4 previously. See total we had 10 right. Let us go back. Total delta functions are 10. 4 here which says that k 1 prime plus k 2 prime is equal to the sum of all external momenta or the final state momenta and then 6 of these. 6 of these we have manipulated and turned them into apart from a Jacobian uh, maybe I can write here delta 4 k 1 prime plus k 2 prime minus summation over p i times this Jacobian which I have uh, written times this delta cube of um, what was that k 1 double prime minus k 1 prime times delta cube of k 2 double prime minus k 2 prime okay and this j is what this j is 1 over this modulus thing okay. coming from next previous okay so this is what we have done now and now i can do uh, these integrals very easily so i will do that thing now So, let me first write down the result and then I can explain integrating over k 1 double prime and k 2 double prime gives um, okay, maybe I should I should just tell what will happen. So, I am going to integrate over k 1 double prime and k 2 double prime let us see what happens. Yeah. So, I am going to integrate over this and this and you have uh, corresponding delta functions right. So, when you integrate over uh, k 1 double prime and use the delta function which says k 1 double prime is equal to k 1 uh, prime the three components of them. Then what will happen here is this one will turn into f 1 star k 1 prime and this one turn into f 2 star k 2 prime. Okay. And then this and this together will become f 1 k 1 prime mod square right because this will be then complex conjugates of each other and similarly these two will give f 2 uh, tilde k 2 prime mod square okay. that is one thing that is going to happen. And then these omega k 1 double prime and omega k 2 double prime they will also turn into 2 omega k 1 prime and 2 omega k 2 prime because I will be using delta functions. Okay. And, and what else? Uh, 
Okay, sorry, getting too many calls. Okay, that is one thing that will happen, and also, uh, so there is no, there is one more place where you will have um, k one double prime, which I can replace by k one prime, and which is this Jacobian factor, right? So here also k one double prime z will become k one prime z, and omega k one double prime will become omega k one, okay? Because of these delta functions. So finally, you'll get the following, and um, okay. So let me let me write down that thing. So p is equal to rho times l um, d q p r uh, p one. Over two omega p one, and this is integrated over region R one. D Q P n two omega p n. It is integrated over region R n. And I should have also included a factor of one over two pi cube that I missed. Times d cube k one. Okay, instead of k one prime, that is what I am left with. I will write k one. Okay, k one prime is a dummy variable, so instead of using k one prime, I will use k one because there is no need to carry a prime now. So I will just use. K one instead of K one prime and K two prime, I will use K one and K two. They are dummy. I can do so. Times um, f one tilde K one <coughs> mod square. As I told you, they will convert to mod squares. Mod square. Times two pi to the four delta four k one plus k two minus summation over p i. That is this delta function which we never touched. Okay, and times the Jacobian factor, which is one over k one prime z over omega k one prime. No, no primes now. K one z over omega k one minus K two z over omega k two modulus of that. Looks like I have taken care of all the. No, I have missed factors of one over two omega k one, two omega k two. Okay, this is the result that I have now. Okay, uh, my bad. I should not have dropped the primes. I should still keep the primes. That's uh, otherwise I'll be inconsistent with my notation. I will tell you why I have put it back. This is k one prime, and these. Yeah, that is also prime. Okay, let's be. Let's keep these primes careful. Okay, the reason I I should not use k one and k two because in the beginning I said that the momenta of these um, incoming particles are localized at k one and k two somewhere here. Yeah, see this k one is not dummy because I told you that. Um, the momentum of 
yeah, here these wave packets are such that they are concentrated around k 2 okay, meaning they have a uh, the peak is around k 2. So, k 2 is not a dummy variable I should I should not have said that I can replace by k 2 and similarly k 1 the the wave packet the wave function of this particle okay, that peaks around k 1 in the momentum space. So, here that is why I have kept these things. Okay. Now, what I will do is I will um, um, use the fact that f 1 tilde and f 2 tilde they are sharply peaked around k 1. So, you can think of them as Gaussian functions peaking at k 1, k 1 prime is equal to k 1 and k 2 prime is equal to k 2. Okay. And, and, uh, and we have already talked about the normalization of these functions. So, what was the normalization? Here, the normalization was this. If you take f 2 tilde and mod square it and integrate over the momentum divided by divided by this omega 2 omega, then that gives you 1. Okay. So, in the limit that it is sharply peaked, I can where is it? Yeah. In the limit it is sharply peaked. I can replace k 1 prime by k 1 and k 2 prime by k 2, because you can think of these as delta functions. Okay. So, they hit only when k 1 prime is equal to k 1 and k 2 prime equal to k 2. So, in that case wherever k 1 prime and k 2 prime appear in this expression, I will replace by k 1 and k 2, okay, because it picks only those values from because of the delta function or a very sharply peaked Gaussian. Gaussian and then I use the normalization that you just saw and replace this integral uh, d cube k 1 prime over 2 omega k 1 prime f tilde 1 k 1 prime mod square by 1 and similarly this one these two together by 1 okay? and then you get the following final result. P is equal to rho times L times Okay, times 2 pi to the 4 delta 4 k 1 just a second. what happened yeah k 1 plus k 2 minus summation over p i okay that is this delta function where k 1 and k 2 have been k 1 prime and k 2 prime have been replaced by k 1 and k 2 um, times 1 over 2 omega k 1 1 over 2 omega k 2 1 over k 1 z over omega k 1 minus k 2 z over omega k 2 modulus of that times m of k 1 k 2 giving p 1 to p n and we have to do a mod square of it, okay? because of 
here I had missed writing down um, mod square. I will not write the arguments now. This should this factor should have been there. So, this is what you get finally. Okay, it has become very nice and simple. Okay, I'll I'll do a little little more of uh, massaging of this thing later, but for now let's see what we have got. So, in apart from these factors, which are basically one divided by energy of the incoming particle K one and one uh, divide one over the energy of the second particle. Uh, Yeah, k 2 and then you have mod m square that is what you have to calculate. Okay. So, the entire information about the dynamics of what process is happening okay, and what kind of interactions are there depends on is contained in this amplitude uh, this uh, matrix element m okay, and the mod square of it. So, this is the piece which really knows about the dynamics or the interactions. Okay. The remaining factors are kinematic factors okay. and you are integrating over all the final state in here and this rho L and L they do not have anything to do with the nature of interaction or the dynamics. It is just that there are too many particles and the, these uh, densities and all these things are involved. So, the real content is contained in the factor which is multiplying rho times L. So, all these things. Okay. And this is uh, what we will look at carefully. Actually, I will I can give you an exercise, um, yeah, it will be better. So, exercise number 1, look at this this line and argue that this is a object which is invariant under boosts along the z direction. Okay. So, not uh, not uh, it is not invariant under uh, complete Lorentz transformations, but only if you restrict uh, transformations along the z direction, then this this line is uh, invariant, and all other quantities are invariant in this expression. So p is invariant under boosts along the z axis, and z axis is the beam axis. Okay, so. Um, I will define d and sigma it is a definition d cube p 1 to d cube p n is equal to. So, I am writing down these factors now. So, this is this is basically um, integral. Okay, let me first write down, then it will be easy to understand. One over two pi cube, one over two omega p one times one over two pi cube, two omega p n. So these are these things, these factors here times two pi four delta four k 1 plus k 2 minus summation over p i this is this factor times mod m square okay. and there is one more factor which is going to come from this line and you can show that this is 1 over 4 k 1 dot k 2 whole square square where m 1 and m 2 are the masses of particle with momentum k 1 and particle with momentum k 2. Okay. So, that is the that is the expression. 
this expression which is really what you have here if you were to take these uh, differentials on the right and integrate over them and multiply with rho and l you will get p okay so stripping out uh, rho and l whatever is left behind okay the differential of it is called the differential cross section okay so this is a fully differential cross section Okay, we'll uh, do more with these differential cross sections later in the course. But now we have uh, made a full connection with the experiment. Okay, I can go and calculate these differential cross sections, or uh, I can do some integrals over these cross sections, differential cross sections, and get uh, some integrated over cross sections, and that I can calculate because. I can calculate mod m squares and mod m squares I can calculate because they are related to the Green's functions. Remember these are mod m squares uh, or m the matrix element is basically S matrix element uh, from which you have removed some delta functions and some other factors of 2 pi s. And we have already seen that S matrix elements are related are uh, by LSJ reduction we had related them to amputated Green's functions. So, now you can write down Green's uh, functions using Feynman diagrams and calculate m. Once you have m for a particular process you multiply with these things and integrate over some momenta if you wish and that gives you after multiplication with rho and l gives you probability of producing that particular final state. Okay. So, you have a calculation from theory side now which you can match with the experiments. Okay. So, we have now completed our connection uh, making the connection with the experiments and uh, we have an expression in general for a fully differential cross section. Okay. And uh, you see in this in this in these steps I never made use of the fact that I am looking only at uh, scalar interactions. Okay, you have um, this result is general the fact the differences that will come from having different kinds of particles will all be contained in the calculation of mod m square, okay, but this formula is, is general otherwise. Okay, um, so, we will I will say a little more maybe next time. Yeah. So, we will stop here.